国务院总理温家宝阁下入场。It's a great honor, privilege, and my personal pleasure to welcome His Excellency Wen Chabao, Premier of the State Council of the People's Republic of China, here in Dalian for the fifth annual meeting of the new champions. Premier Wen, I consider you to be the patron of the Summer Davos. Since its inception, you have always inspired us by sharing your vision and thinking of the present and future economic and financial context. Today's world is in a critical situation, and China clearly has an important an ever more important role to play in driving growth and strengthening the global economy and global cooperation. And here, I know how much public welfare, job creation, innovation, education, and health are key policy priorities in your leadership of China. And this summit, should serve to further support and strengthen these efforts. Placing dignity and quality of life of all people at the center of future economic activity is at the hearts of the participants here of the World Economic Forum, requiring a true partnership of all stakeholders. For this reason, I'm particularly delighted to say that gathered here are not only business leaders, but also representatives of all sectors of society, of all demographics, with a particular emphasis on young, innovative entrepreneurs. We are all committed to improving the welfare of society. And in this respect, the theme Mastering Quality Growth is most appropriate for meeting the fifth time here in China. Premier Wen, you have encouraged us over many years, and I would like to thank you on behalf of the over 1,500 new champions gathered here for your great support, which has been so essential to make this annual meeting a true success. Now, of course, we are keen to hear from you on the future development of China economics policies and your personal vision of the world's transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Wen Xiaobao, Premier of the State Council of the People's Republic of China. Professor Klaus Schwab, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to extend warm congratulations on the opening of the fifth annual meeting of the new champions or the Summer Davos. And a sincere welcome to you all. This has been the fifth year for 
the start of the summer Davos meetings. The past five years have witnessed the formation of the purpose of this very forum, that is, it is a forum oriented towards the world, to the future, to innovation, and to the young people. Diverse forms of discussions, roundtables, and sessions of the summer Davos are very lively and full of vigor, especially at the height of the international financial crisis. The summer Davos sent out a message of hope to the international community and brought in turn confidence and courage to the business community. The theme of this year's meeting, Mastering Quality Growth, represents people's shared desire for robust, sustainable and balanced economic growth. And I wish this meeting a great success. September the 15th, three years ago, marked the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers. And that marked the beginning of the international financial crisis. Three years have passed since then. International organizations, governments, the business communities, and academia are all taking a hard look at the root causes of this crisis and exploring ways to sustain the growth of both the global economy and national economies. With regard to China's economic development, some people have hailed its achievements, while some others have expressed doubt. Some are optimistic about China's economic future, while some others say that China is in trouble. But we in China are clear-headed and are firm in our confidence. We know where we stand. The first decade of this century has seen major changes in the global political and economic landscape. It has also seen rapid industrialization and urbanization in China. Great progress has been made in China's comprehensive reform, opening up and modernization endeavor during this decade. Over the past 10 years, China's economy has been growing by 10.5% annually. Its GDP and trade volume respectively rose from the sixth and the seventh place to the second place in the world. China's industrial structure is being upgraded. The foundation of its agriculture has grown stronger. Development in the central and western provinces has picked up speed. And a mode of regional development, with each region tapping its distinctive strength, has taken shape. Social services are thriving, and urban and rural income has risen substantially. China has taken on a completely new look as its total economic output and overall national strength significantly increased and the people's living standards greatly improved. We have continued to resolve challenging issues in the development by carrying out reform and steadily improved the socialist market economy. An array of important reform measures have been introduced in taxation, finance, enterprises, rural areas, and resource prices. These measures have enhanced the vitality of microeconomy 
and the macro regulation and raise the efficiency of market allocation of resources. We have made full progress in expanding social services. Nationwide, free nine-year compulsory education has been achieved. A basic social security system covering both urban and rural areas has been put in place. Construction of government subsidized housing is being accelerated. They cherish the goal of the Chinese that everyone should have access to education, employment and pay, medical and old age care, and housing is becoming a reality. Through reform, we are removing bottlenecks hampering development and have released the initiative, enthusiasm, and entrepreneurial spirit of the Chinese people. This in turn has fully activated factors such as labor, capital, knowledge, technology, and management, which form the source of rapidly increasing social wealth. We are pursuing a win-win strategy of opening up to increase the openness of Chinese economy. Since joining the WTO in 2001, we have speeded up efforts to change the way of conducting foreign trade, improved the import and export mix, upgraded the processing trade, and vigorously developed trade in services. We have pursued the dual strategy of introducing foreign capital and encouraging Chinese companies to invest overseas to achieve greater balance between the use of FDI and overseas Chinese investment. We have taken an active part in the reform of the global economic governance structure and building of regional cooperation mechanisms and worked to deepen bilateral and multilateral economic and trade relations. China today is a fully open market economy. The opening up policy has both benefited China's development and the well-being of its people and contributed to regional and global economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, with its development entering a new historical stage in the second decade of 21st century, China is in an important period of strategic opportunities. Peace, development and cooperation remain the trend of our times. The international environment is generally conducive to China's pursuit of peaceful development. Numerous factors, continuous industrialization, urbanization and agricultural modernization, huge market potential, a relatively high savings rate, better IND capacity, better education, a more skilled labor force, deepening reform, and overall stability. All these have created enabling conditions and vast space for continued economic and social development in China. On the other hand, we are still facing a pressing problem, that is, China's development is not yet balanced, coordinated, and sustainable. And there are many institutional constraints hindering scientific development. As the size of the Chinese economy grows, it will become difficult to keep high-speed growth over a long period of time. However, the new developments, both internationally and in China, have not changed the fundamentals of China's development. We have the right conditions and we have both the ability and the confidence to maintain steady and fast growth of the economy and bring China's economy to a new stage of development. The current 12th five-year plan period is a critical stage in China's efforts to build a society of initial prosperity in all respects. Taking into consideration the full future trend and conditions, as well as China's goals for 2020, 
and responding to the need for changing the model of growth at a faster pace, achieving scientific development, and bringing the benefits of reform and development to all the people, we have set the following goals and strategic tasks for these five years. China will continue to follow the strategy of expanding domestic demand with focus on improving the structure of demand and increasing consumer demand to drive economic growth. Domestic demand is crucial and a necessary choice for a big country to achieve sustainable economic growth. China has 20% of the world's population, with its per capita GDP exceeding 4,000 US dollars. China has entered a key stage for upgrading consumption structure. To upgrade consumption and raise the quality of life for urban and rural population and strengthen weak links in economic and social development will generate enormous domestic demand. We will endeavor to build a long-term mechanism for expanding consumer demand create a favorable environment for consumption, improve consumer expectation, boost spending power, and upgrade consumption structure. We will expand consumption in the course of advancing urbanization, protecting and improving people's well-being, and speeding up the development of service industries. We aim to make urbanization grow by four percentage points and raise the share of the value added created by service industries in GDP by four percentage points, so that final demand will become a major force driving China's economic growth. China will continue to develop education as a priority, bring about all-round human development, and promote economic development on the basis of improving the quality of human capital. For a major developing country like China, boosting education and improving quality of human resources will drive economic development and make it more competitive. We'll act quickly to achieve economic growth by increasing the quality of human capital rather than by just using more workers. This will enable us to catch up with the progress in technology and change the model of growth. And it holds the key for us to adapt to demographic changes and achieve sustainable development. We'll fully implement the outline of the national medium and the long-term plan for education and promote balanced development of education at different levels and of various types. We will ensure equitable education for all, promote well-rounded development of people, train innovation-oriented talents, and advance education in a scientific manner. And we will move faster to make China not only a big country, but also a strong country in both education and human resources. This will provide strong intellectual impetus for sustaining China's economic development. China will continue to build an innovation-driven society, speed up the development of innovation system, and enhance the role of science and technology in driving economic and social development. R&D is crucial in guiding our efforts to accelerate the change of growth model. During the 12th five-year plan period, we will give greater priority to R&D deepen reform of science and technology institutions, and address the root causes of R&D not fully meeting the need of economic development. We will increase input in science and technology and raise the share budget for R&D in GDP from 1.75% to 2.2%. We will follow closely the latest progress in overseas frontier technologies 
strengthen basic research and the research of high technologies of strategic importance and pool resources to make breakthroughs in developing core technologies. We will enhance capacity to create, utilize, protect and manage intellectual property rights and bring into play the creativity of the whole society. We will accelerate the upgrading of traditional industries by using new technologies, new materials, new techniques, and new equipment. We will vigorously develop strategic emerging industries with a focus at this stage on industries related to energy conservation, environmental protection, new generation information technology, biotechnology, high-end equipment manufacturing, new energy, new materials, and new energy vehicles. Our goal is to develop new pillar industries so as to gain an initiative for development in the new scientific revolution and industrial revolution. China will continue to save resources and protect the environment, follow the path of green, low carbon, and sustainable development, use resources in a more efficient way, and develop stronger capacity for tackling climate change. To conserve resources and protect the environment is crucial to achieving sustainable development. And this is one of China's basic state policies. We will speed up the building of an industrial structure, a mode of production, and a model of consumption that are conducive to resource conservation and environmental protection, and promote harmony between man and nature. During the 12th five-year plan period, we will raise the share of non-fossil energy in primary energy consumption to 11.4 percent, reduce energy consumption and CO2 emission per unit of GDP by 16 percent and 17 percent respectively, and cut total discharge of major pollutants by 8 to 10 percent. We will improve laws, regulations, and standards, strengthen performance-based accountability, overhaul the pricing mechanism for energy and resources, and increase fiscal taxation, financial, and policy and other policy incentives. We will promote circular economy, develop low-carbon industrial, construction, and transportation systems promote energy, water, land, and material conservation, and integrated resource utilization. We will preserve and repair the ecosystem, increase forest carbon sink, and build stronger capacity for tackling climate change. China will continue to put people's interests first, pay more attention to ensuring and improving people's well-being, and pursue common prosperity. Everything we do is to enable all the people to have better lives. And this is the criterion to measure the performance of all of our work. Our goal is to bring the benefit of development to all ensure and improve people's well-being, and advance social progress in all respects. We will give priority to job creation in promoting economic and social development, and create equitable job opportunities for all. We will adjust income distribution, ensure that personal income grows in step with economic growth, and that labor remuneration grows in step with increase of productivity. We will gradually raise the share of personal income in national income distribution and the share of labor remuneration in primary distribution. We expect that per capita urban disposable income and per capita rural net income will both grow by more than 7 percent annually. We will put in place systems providing basic old age care 
and basic medical and health care for the whole urban and rural population, and extend the coverage of government subsidized housing to 20 percent of the urban population. China will continue to deepen reform and open up and resolutely remove institutional hurdles to increase the momentum of pursuing sustainable development. China owes its rapid development in the past 30 years and more to reform and open up. And this will be equally true for its future development and progress. We will continue to advance both economic and political structural reform to create strong impetus for economic and social development. We will uphold and improve the basic economic system, speed up fiscal taxation and financial reform, reform of prices of factors of production, reform of monopoly sectors and other important fields, and strive to make major progress in these reforms. We will exercise governance pursuant to law and address the institutional causes for over-concentration power and lack of checks on it. We will protect people's democratic rights and their lawful rights and interests so as to uphold fairness and justice. China cannot develop itself in isolation from the world, and the world also needs China for its development. Here I wish to reiterate that China's opening up to the outside world is a long-term commitment which covers all fields and is mutually beneficial. China's basic state policy of opening up will never change. We will continue to get actively involved in economic globalization and work to build a fair and equitable international trading regime and financial system. We will continue to improve foreign-related economic laws, regulations and policies so as to make China's investment environment in keeping with international standard, transparent and more business-friendly. Ladies and gentlemen, while the world economy is slowly recovering, uncertainties and destabilizing factors are growing. Both the advanced and emergent economies have experienced slowdown in growth. Sovereign debt risks are growing in some countries, causing turbulence on the international financial market. Unemployment in major advanced economies remains high, while emerging economies are facing upward inflationary pressure. All this shows that world economic recovery will be a long-term, difficult and complicated process. In addressing the Davos Forum in early 2009, I said that the crisis is a global challenge. To overcome the crisis, we need to have confidence, strengthen cooperation, and live up to our responsibility. The crisis also puts to the test the international community's sincerity, um, sincerity for and a commitment to cooperation, and it puts to the test our wisdom as well. I still hold this view today. With so many uncertainties facing global economic recovery, the international community must have more confidence, enhance cooperation, and jointly tackle the challenges. We should strengthen dialogue and coordination on macroeconomic policy and accelerate the building of a just, equitable, sound and stable new world economic order. Governments should fulfill their responsibilities and put their own house in order. The major developed economies should adopt responsible, and effective fiscal and monetary policies, properly handle debt issues, ensure the safety and stable operation of investment in the market, and maintain confidence of investors around the world. 
China's economy is generally in good shape. Since the beginning of this year, its economic growth has taken a northerly shift from being driven by policy stimulus to self-generating growth, moving in the right direction of macroeconomic regulation. In the first half of this year, China's GDP grew by 9.6 percent, and its trade surplus decreased by 17.6 percent. We have achieved these um, thanks to increasing domestic consumption. A total of 6.55 million urban jobs have been created. Price rises as a whole are under control. Market supply of important goods is ensured, and a structural adjustment of economic sectors is moving forward. Business profits and government revenues are increasing quite fast. People's income has steadily increased, and their lives have further improved. Since the second quarter, the economic growth has dropped somewhat, but this is mostly the result of proactive macro regulation, and it is not beyond our expectation. We will address the pressing challenges in the economy and continue to implement a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy. We will maintain continuity and stability in macroeconomic policy and make our policy responses more targeted, flexible, and forward-looking in light of changes in the economy. We will maintain control over the intensity, pace, and the focus of macroeconomic regulation and strike a balance among maintaining stable and fast economic growth, adjusting economic structure, and managing inflation expectation. This will enable us to maintain general stability of prices as a whole prevent major economic fluctuations, and meet this year's goals for economic and social development. I am confident that China's economy will grow over a longer period of time at a higher level and with better quality. And I'm confident that China's economy will make new contribution to robust, sustainable, and the balanced growth of the global economy. We sincerely welcome foreign companies to actively involve themselves in China's reform and open up process and share the opportunities and the benefits of China's prosperity and progress. Thank you. We have the opportunity for one or two questions, but first I would like to thank uh, Premier Wen for his presentation, which inspires us with optimism, not only for China, but for the world as a whole, because what we need in the world is a much more comprehensive vision of how to overcome the challenges which we face. And I think your commitment to robust balance and sustained growth is exactly what we want to express also in the theme of this annual meeting, quality of growth. Now, Mr. Premier, you referred in your speech to the challenges which are faced in some countries, uh, particularly also in the financial system. What, and that's my question, what could China do in order to help the world to overcome those financial challenges which we face particularly in Europe and in the United States. Thank you. 
。您在演讲中特别指出，应该以全面的眼光来看待和克服。目前我们面临的各项挑战，而且您在演讲中提出的要促进强劲、平衡和可持续的发展，与本次年会的主题也是不谋而合的。温总理，刚才您演讲中提到了世界许多国家面临的挑战，特别是在金融领域。我的问题是，中国能采取什么措施来帮助国际社会，特别是欧洲有关国家和美国？迎接金融领域的挑战。如果我们看一下当前国际和金融形势，我们就会发现，在经济缓慢复苏的过程中，不确定。不稳定的因素在加大，一些主要经济体增长乏力，失业居高不下。美国现在面临三项任务：一是控制外在的顶线。二是减少财政赤字，三是通过经济的发展来增加就业。欧洲一部分国家存在着主权债务危机。现在值得注意的是，要防止主权债务危危机的蔓延和扩大。由于美元汇率的波动，国际大宗商品的价格处于不稳定的状态。新兴的发达发展中国家面临着通货膨胀的压力，在这种形势下，作为中国，已经和世界的发展不可分割。我们必须首先把自己的事情办好，同时要加强国际经济改革和金融改革，努力保持世界经济的稳定和发展，实现经济强劲、可持续和平衡增长。As the global economy slowly recovers, we still face a host of uncertainties and destabilizing factors. The growth in major economies remains sluggish, and unemployment has been high. The United States has three major tasks, namely to control public debt, to bring down budget deficit, and to increase jobs by growing the economy. Some European countries face its severe sovereign debt crisis. Most, what's most important now is to prevent the further spread of the sovereign debt crisis in Europe. The fluctuations in the value of the US dollar has resulted in the instability of commodity prices on international markets. New emerging economies are under inflationary pressure. Under these circumstances, the Chinese economy is closely linked with the global economy. Countries must first put their own house in order and at the same time work together to advance the reform in the international economic and financial systems, maintain the stability and development of the global economy, 
and work hard to enhance the strong, balanced and sustainable growth of the international economy. Yu 我们希望美国要实行正确的经济政策，保持财政和金融的稳定，以维护投资者的利益和信心。在去年，我同奥巴马总统会谈时。我曾经提出这样一个建议让中国的企业到美国去投资美国应该放开商品管制就可以增加十万人 The United States is the biggest developed economy in the world. The United States has a strongly based economy. It has advanced science and technology and a large pool of well-trained labor force. We have the confidence that the United States will overcome the current difficulties and achieve a full economic recovery. We hope that the United States will take the right economic policy, maintain fiscal and financial stability, and keep the confidence of the investors and ensure the interests of global investors. In my meeting with President Barack Obama last year, I proposed to him that China and the United States engage in large-scale financial and economic cooperation. Two elements are essential in this proposal. First, the United States should open its market to investment by Chinese companies so that China will turn from just buying U.S. T-bonds to making investment in the U.S. market, and that will help generate more jobs in the United States. Second, the U.S. should increase its exports to China, and the current problem actually lies with the United States. And to resolve the problem, the U.S. needs to lift its export restrictions. I recall a remark made by former Secretary of Commerce, Gary Locke, of the United States. He said that if the U.S. imports from East Asian countries increase by one percentage point, that will help generate an additional 100,000 job opportunities in the United States. My proposal was well received by the President, 
And I hope that in this positive way, China and the United States can work together to address their trade imbalance and enhance trade and economic cooperation. Chinese国家发生主权债务危机经济出现困难的时候，我们多次表示，中国愿意伸出援助之手。继续加大对欧洲的投资。不久以前，我同欧盟委员会主席巴罗佐通电话，我再一次向他明确表示，中国至今相信欧洲经济能够克服困难，中国仍然愿意扩大对欧洲的投资。但是同样我也希望欧盟的领导人欧洲一些主要国家的领导人也要大胆的从战略上看待中欧关系比如承认中国完全的市场经济地位其实按照WTO的规则 中国的完全市场经济地位到2016年就为全世界所承认。早几年表示出一种诚意，是一种朋友对朋友的关系。下个月我将同欧盟领导人进行会晤，我希望这次会晤。The EU is China's comprehensive strategic partner. We have followed closely the economic development in European countries and the difficulties that some European countries have encountered. When some European countries have suffered from the sovereign debt crisis, we have on many occasions expressed our readiness to extend a helping hand and our readiness to increase our investment in Europe. Not long ago, I had a com telephone conversation with President Barroso of the European Commission. In my discussion with him, I once again made it very clear that China is confident that the EU will overcome the current difficulties and China is willing to invest more in European countries. At the same time, we hope that EU leaders and leaders of the key members of the European Union will take bold steps and view the EU's relations with China with a strategic vision. That is, we believe they should recognize China's full market economy status. As a matter of fact, according to WTO rules, China will be recognized as a full market economy by 2016 internationally and to show one's sincerity on this issue a few years ahead of that time is the way a friend treats another friend. Next month I'm going to hold a summit with EU leaders. I hope that there will be some breakthroughs at the upcoming China-EU summit. Japan 有很强的互补性将迎来一个增长的高峰
，日本已帮助。在这里，我想我们还不要忘记那些发展中国家，在金融危机中受害最深的、最为困难的。是广大发展中国家，他们不仅在经济发展上，而且在通胀压力上，都遇到了前所未有的困难。我们对他们要施以援助之手。前不久，我们曾两次对非洲进行了粮食援助。包括中东北非地区一些动乱的国家，我们也施以人道主义的援助。整个世界在应对危机当中，必须携手共进，合作来克服困难。中国将秉持这个原则。谢谢诸位。谢谢舒瓦布先生。Japan is China's close neighbor. The economies of the two countries are highly complementary. The total trade between China and Japan takes up a large proportion of the total trade of each country. Japan has encountered the dual difficulty caused by the tsunami national natural disaster and the nuclear incident. Yet we believe that Japan will have a new round of upward economic growth in the course of post-disaster recovery and reconstruction. When Japan is in difficulty, China has extended a helping hand in terms of economic and trade cooperation and tourism. At the same time, we must not forget the difficulties facing the vast number of developing countries. They are the ones that have suffered most in the economic crisis. They face unprecedented challenges in terms of growing their economies and tackling inflation. They need the help from the international community. Not long ago, we have extended food aid to some African countries on two occasions, and we have provided humanitarian assistance to some West Asian and North African countries that have experienced turbulence. In a word, the international community must work in concert with a spirit of solidarity in tackling the crisis and meeting challenges. And that is the spirit that China will apply in working with other countries to meet all the challenges. Thank you. We thank very much Premier Wen for this very comprehensive presentation of the challenges but also of the solutions in the future of economic uh, the, of the economic development of China. Mr. Premier, I would say you have shown the audience a vision and we have seen since China embarked into its policy of opening up, of reform, so the vision always has been followed by implementation. It shows us if we have the will to overcome the challenges, we can do so. And I would like to make this meeting a kind of turning point in how we look at the future. We should look at the future with optimism. If we apply our capabilities, particularly our entrepreneurial, our innovative capabilities, I think China will continue to succeed in its path to a grand, prosperous, responsible, cooperative nation in the world. And the world will be capable to solve its problems. And together, we will have a more peaceful world with strong, and as you uh, mentioned, strong, balanced, and sustained development. 
Thank you again, and I would like to integrate into those thanks also our partners here in China, the National Development and Reform Commission, the Foreign Ministry. We are grateful for this partnership, and we are particularly grateful, Mr. Premier, that for the fifth time you have opened this summer Davos. Thank you. 感谢温总理，您刚才非常全面的就中国经济发展以及世界经济形势的未来所面临的挑战以及解决方案所给出的回答。您在回答当中，使我们看到了您着眼长远的目光。自从中国开启改革开放的进程以来，它一直在沿着正确的方向，一步一个脚印地向前迈进。中国的发展历程使我们看到，只要有意愿克服困难，就能够取得成功。我希望今年的夏季达沃斯论坛年会能够是成为我们指明未来方向的转折点。我们以应该以乐观的情绪来对待未来的发展。并且相信，如果我们尽自己所能，特别是激发企业家的开拓和创新的精神，那么我们就可以取得成功。中国就可以以一个负责合作的大国形象，继续在发展的过程中取得更多的成就。世界也会从中国的成就中获益。这样，我们可以使世界更加和平，而且促进您刚才在演讲中提到的强劲、平衡和可持续的发展。最后，我还想借此机会感谢中国发改委、外交部等中国的合作伙伴，也感谢温总理您本人第五次出席夏季达沃斯论坛，并为此揭幕。